Goody, goody. I have to ask myself, when did life and food become about instant satisfaction? About self-service TV dinners, the 15-minute microwave roast chicken, chocolate mousse in a box, money for love and love for money? Instead of the sublime importance of friendships, of weekends away, sunshine, and the great outdoors. So now all things aside, welcome to Cooked, to my life. Goody, goody. Right, so this is how it's going to work. I've asked 30 of my friends to help me make my cooking show. And over the next 30 days, I'm going to take them on an epic 4,500 kilometer road trip from the southern tip of Africa, right up to the wild coast in the Trans Sky, and back again. Now, this being our first episode, we're only going to be traveling from Cape Town, otherwise known as the Mother City, up to the Breda River in the Overberg, a distance of about 250 kilometers. Now the beauty about this road trip is that my friends own for an experience of a lifetime as I take them on what works out to be an all expenses paid holiday where they get to relax and let their hair down and I get to cook for them. Now just so you know, I'm not a chef, I'm not even a cook, I'm just an average Joe with a passion for life, love, food and my friends. And this is my way of sharing my passions with you. So now episode one takes place on the banks of the Breda River at a spot called Round the Bend. And if all things go well, I should see you tomorrow for some chili coffee, a breakfast for the boys, and a little bit of a Vata Blomiki Poiki, which is Afrikaans English for a water flower stew. Oh, this looks like a brilliant spot. Bo, won't you give me that stuff? Watch my dogs for me too. Only time you can pick Vata Blomikis is at dawn. Now, whether that's uh, scientific and proven, I don't really know, but I kind of dig the feeling of getting up in the morning and getting out here. Now, guys, what you're really looking for in a Vata Blomiki is one that's a little bit more green with less flowers, so that's the part that you really eat. And if you want an equivalent and you can't get Vata Blomiki, you can use green beans as well. Translation, by the way, Vata Blomiki is Afrikaans English for uh, a water flower. Yeah, the frogs, Glenn. It's out of my seat, Greg. Ah, there's Gareth and the boys. We're going down to the mouth now to do a little bit of fishing, maybe get some oysters and stuff. They should be something off now. We'll meet up with them in like 20 minutes or so. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to become our dinner this evening. With nature's bounty. And could it be any fresher than this? OK, guys, let's go. And I think we probably should get out of here before the farmer finds us on his ground. I've got a very strange request. We're busy shooting a, a, a South African travel cooking series and we left our pot up at um, up the creek and round the bend. Can we borrow a saucepan from you for like an hour and a half and return it to you? The boys are down there. We're going to go and join them for a little bit of brekkie. Look for some oysters and stuff and hopefully get a fish and we'll see what we have for breakfast. Got a couple of basic things in the car, which we'll grab now. And then uh, breakfast down there. Evan and I have to feel pack meal. If you just get to that and hold the camera, I've definitely got the short end of the stick here. Okay, first thing for my breakfast this morning, I just gotta make a quick little fire to get um, some meat for the coffee and for the brekkie for the boys. So while these are sort of getting going, what I'm going to do is uh, go and look for some oysters with the boys and uh, maybe check if the guys who've been here for an hour or two more than us have managed to catch some fish maybe to add to the breakfast. Good morning. How are you? I'm not Is there no fish? There's nothing happening. So we're going to revert to plan B. I'm going to go get my wetsuit jacket. Yeah. So it's not low tide yet. Yeah. So I'm going to just get in and stretch around in the, in the deeper parts of the pool here so we can get some oysters. Yeah. But I can do them for breakfast. Let them. What I'm going to do first is a little bit of coffee, and um, I love my coffee, and um, I love my espresso pot. But this morning, considering the boys are going to be climbing a little bit of cold water and they've been fishing for a little while, I think we'll make them special coffee. 
So we'll add a little couple of bits and bobs into it. We'll blow them a little. Actually, it's just got brandy in it. This is very simple for everyone this morning, and um, the beauty about the espresso pot is you can put it onto a fire or to a stove anywhere. They're quite robust, so you don't have to be gentle with them. Take them everywhere with you and experiment. Then we just want to chop a couple of chilies here. If you, all you want to do is infuse those flavors into the coffees. You just put them into the top of the coffee, and again, when the water, <gasps> it's getting hot, when the water boils up and steams through the coffee, it'll pull, extract those flavors out of the chili as well. So we'll have a chili coffee, and then when we serve it to the guys, we'll give them a little bit of a 10-year-old brandy to throw into it, just to give it a little flavor as well. We're gonna make a little quick breakfast for them as well. It's gonna be straightforward. Everything's just gonna get chopped up roughly in here. We're gonna mush it when it's in here. I forgot my knives up at the house, so I had to borrow um, the Robbie's little fishing knife, and it's as sharp as it can be. Oh, and then uh, I borrowed a pan from the lady. She said she'd come and haunt me if I didn't return her pan. She's worried about it. <laughs> Morning, Evan. <laughs> it's all a, oh, sorry. It's quite a hot little dish, so I'm just gonna put everything in. And you're gonna discover with me, I love my chili. And then I just need a bit of pepper. Now, this should dissolve away completely. We're gonna make it boil up radically. You want all these flavors to dissolve into each other. So all we gotta do is just let it cook for about half an hour or so. And uh, we've got some whales out here. This coast is known for them. Okay, guys, now you can see it's taken about half an hour, 40 minutes for this to uh, boil down nicely, and we're ready for the next stage of it. So who wants coffee first, eh? Rob, you want a cup of coffee? Give me your cuppa then. That's a chili coffee. Chili coffee for you, chili my brother. Chili coffee, what a way to start the day. Absolutely. And then, Robbie, if you go and scratch around in the back there, there's a little bit of brandy. Oh, really oh. nice brandy. Just put like a cap full in each of these. I want one of them. And a splash of milk and um, there's some cinnamon sugar there as well. I want to do a couple of eggs in here. Now you can see how it starts cooking immediately. Robbie, how's my coffee, brother? Oh, so this is a little bit of special coffee. Good morning. Cheers. Good morning. Good morning. No. That's understatement. Yes. So, breakfast, I think he's now ready. That's done. Now, oh, we like your skirt too, with those skinny legs. <laughs> Here's your breakfast. <laughs> Would you like some coffee? I'd love coffee. It's a bit chilly out there now. Oh, I can imagine. Oh, a bit of chilli. Get the blood going again. And a little bit of coffee for you. I know what's in that. <laughs> so I'm not even going to hesitate. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> now that's coffee. <laughs> that's coffee. Okay. Oh, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> so we're going to go back up to Apple Creek. We're going to cook up our water plumikis. Afrikaans English for water flies, in case you didn't catch it the first time. Yeah, cool. Come join us. Morning. Sun rises. OK, we've just had an awesome little afternoon relaxing after our fishing excursion this morning, which didn't kind of happen collected our Vata Bromikis, and it's going to turn into what's going to be a long, slow dinner over the next five or six hours. The girls are kindly prepping everything for this evening so that we don't have to kind of spend time chopping and cutting and all the rest of it so that uh, all of us can enjoy ourselves as much as possible. But all I'm going to do now is start off with a bread. Now, the beauty about this bread is that it's like really an idiot can make it. Dale, you could probably <laughs> do quite well at this one. So, it's 500 grams of self-raising flour. 
375 mils of your favorite beer. Now I've left these in the sun a little bit just so they warm up. You don't want cold beer because yeast reacts better under heat. And you add it slowly because you don't need it to be too moist, but you also don't want it too dry. And this is the messy part. Richard, come Mr. Walker. Now you don't really have to worry about mushing this up too much. It's not like a dough that needs to be kneaded, so it's very rough. Slowly add it in, Richard. You don't need to overwork this dough at all. Who else wants to get their hands dirty? Rajni, you're doing nothing, baby. Go wash your hands. Your turn. Yeah, you won't be laugh. No hiding from me. We've known each other for 22 years, 23 years. Long time. Rajni, come, baby. Another pot for you. You realize I'm terrible cook. Uh, well, at least you'll be able to make bread after this. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, my ball, and this is uh, Richard, who's a, a good learner. And then we have Rojni, who I'm afraid, <laughs> who I'm afraid might um, burn water. I don't know if she's quite up to it there. OK, I just want to go clean my fingers. Um, Richard, um, I think you too, you come along as well. Let's clean our fingers quickly, because Rojni's going to be a while. Guys, now you can see there's been a miraculous change. We've cleaned our pots. All I need is a splash of oil. And then you just want to put some pumpkin seeds into yours. Well, yeah, I think I quite like you just standing there, Rajni. I'm a bit worried by you. Not that bad. Come on. It's well, we're well going to see bad. at the end of it. I think to identify Rajni's one, I think all we have to do is add some, some black sesame seeds there, some roasted sesame seeds. I'll put them on top of you. OK, well, then we'll know which is yours. Just put him down in the center there. As close as you can to a little more. Just push those in a bit. Look at the beer bread there. Oh, well, if we judge you, okay. Yeah, I'm putting it in. Putting it in, yeah. And uh, the proof is going to be in the pudding a bit later on. And then all we're going to do is put them, or let them rise for about half an hour or so, just to develop up a little bit. And then we're going to put them on next to a fire on very low heat and let them cook up to this golden brown little bun. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, Rose. Pleasure. You can clean your hands now. Thank you. It's approaching sunset. We are ready to start making our dinner. Everyone started settling in. It's very straightforward again. Everything's kind of straightforward. It's, we're going to do it all in pokey pots tonight. Going to do venison one in two of them, and then we're going to do a veggie one in the other one for the vegetarians. The start of both of them is pretty much very similar. She's frying up some garlic and some onions. Oh, I really don't feel like chopping garlic today. You can come chop garlic, Cassie. Cassie, like... Yeah, peel so long for me, that's like thing. Do you know how to do it? An easy way. Yeah, you crush it, right? Just like this. You know what? I'd rather be doing at sunset. You know, uh, sunset's a bad time for me to cook, huh? Because I'd rather be standing here just... Can I do that too? Yeah, okay. Have a moment. <laughs> okay, with the knife in my hand. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Mm. Oh, beautiful. No wonder they're smiling behind us. Okay. You see, we're looking the wrong way. I'm having to look at them instead of this. You go get, carry on there for me, I'm going to get some onions. So all we're going to do, to start off the rest of this, is just let the um, garlic and the onions, these onions, just sweat a little bit. So we're going to throw in lashings of olive oil. And the beauty about olive oil is it can make most meals very rich with all the goodness. Yeah, you know, there's no such thing in my life as cholesterol-free, Factory. I like all of that. Double thick cream, real butter. All good. And we're cooking for like 30 odd people tonight, so it's quite a big spread. Now, we would normally have coals underneath these, but uh, the wind keeps blowing that, the coal away. So, what we're going to do is as this burns down, we're going to start putting some coal underneath so that it starts heating up evenly. And we're just going to sweat these not long. 
and then we're going to start braising the meat. Can't you can give me a hand? Cube it, nice, thick chunkies. This is Ken's book, which is a South African buck. And the nice thing about cooking poikis is that they're slow cookers. All of the, the vegetables very fast, but the, the venison's a slow cooker. So we all get time to relax and enjoy ourselves over the course of the evening. I guess there's times for instant food and satisfaction, but uh, this isn't one of them. Gray? Oh, can I please have a drink? Down on his knees, come on. Can I have a spoken diesel? Thanks. Just want to check out these guys. Have they sweated up enough yet? Come here, you can hear them sizzling now. And, um, yeah, Francis, do you want to get some salt, some pepper, some cumin? Oh, thank you, God. Master amongst men. It's not a vodka, this is a brandy and coke. You're going to help me make pup just now? Yeah, African one. African one. Okay, cool. You can eat it with the poiki later. So we're almost ready with the, the meat. It's just got to be sealed. So we've got a couple of veggies and things still to add, but we're going to come back now now, which is, a, by the way, South African English for anything from five minutes to an hour and a half, and uh, start adding a couple of other bits and bobs. You done? You done? You done? Cool. <laughs> Okay, now you remember Justin was making bread earlier on in the kitchen. These things were put in front of the fire, just in a warm place, just left to, to rise. Um, don't know where he's gone. He's gone AWOL. These things have been standing here for long enough, so I think someone needs to put them on the fire now. This should cook slowly. The cast iron pot will keep it nice and warm. Okay, Francis, let's do the next thing. Um, put a little bit in the, in the, in the meat one, huh? Yeah. Francis has got shavings of butternut because then what happens it'll actually disappear into the starting flavor as opposed to ending up with chunks of butternut so you get that sweetness which is quite nice with the venison and even the, the vegetable poiki it's going to be superb the beautiful thing about poikis as well is it's about layering we literally are going to stir it again okay francis where's that stock i think let's put that in next Okay, um, Danny didn't get the shot of the tomatoes going in, so I have to mention to you that we put two tins of tomatoes into the thing, along with a whole lot of sprigs of broccoli. Did you miss the carrots as well? Do you want me to go back there? The onions, the garlic? No? Yeah. <laughs> Just playing with you. It must simmer. It must whisper. Because that's the beauty about a poiki. I swallow this stuff every time, man. It's like meat. My lips feel like they're going numb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we're ready for like the next segment of this. We should add all the bits and pieces into our poiki pot, which is the final flavorings, the kind of last couple of ingredients, just so that we finish it up and round it off beautifully. A little bit of soya. Yeah, that's good. Just to get the saltiness going now, some port would be grand. I think we'll make this one a port one. We'll actually just make both of them a port one. Oh, sorry, these are just potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> and now, intrepid Rion, wherever he may be, is supposed to be doing our flambéed steak for us. Again, we try and only to use venison because it's not alien to the countryside, you know what I mean? So it looks after nature, nature looks after it. Yeah. One at a time, one two at a time. time, one at a time. And this is like simplicity itself, completely and utterly. Nothing else added here. We haven't even put oil on it, we haven't marinated it. It's straight springbok on the fire. Justin, just give it a bang Look at that. Beautiful. 
That looks just perfect. And you see how quickly that was, guys? Less than three or four minutes, and that's it. And this is just a little snack for the guys while they're waiting for the mammoth meal to be cooked. Everyone who wants a taste, come across this side. Help yourself. Whole grain must be fresh from my favorite flan made in Great. Right. Mm. Good one. Okay, Francis, we just need to do the last step of it all now, and then John's going to help you make the thing. So let's just put these into the pan. Guys, our Vata Blomicky is from this morning, less than 12 hours old, and going straight into the pot. It's really start cooking up in that heat. You can see how it's reduced down now. Ah, oh, John, we need to do the pup. Make us. Afrikaans for I don't know what. I don't know how quite to describe it. It's like porridge, but it's savory and, and you mix it with juicy sauces. This is the way it's done. Yes, put it oh. first. And then I put water. Hot water. Yeah, salt yeah. water. And then I put meats. And then I put the meats. That's yeah, he's working it. There's a whole technique involved here. Yeah. Pushing a shove and a poke. Well, that sounds like fun a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what time's that happening, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, this is the final, I guess, check before we serve everyone. And it's looking like it's just perfect. See how it's just bubbling away now? And the Vata Bromikis have gone all tender. And they're just perfect. From the middle of my I've been about an hour and a half, so we're about ready to take a look how these babies are. Oh, there's mine. Look at that beauty. Of course, he gives me the pot without a cloth. It says open up. How about that? Let's cook for Justin. It's going to be good. Uh, how does it go? Oh. Oh. Tastes a nice gamey flavour. Eh? Awesome. Better than the flavour gamey. Yeah. Best in the world. You know the recipe. Where's the food earlier? Why is that? Tight, tight, tight. Didn't like the sauce. What? The sauce is awesome. What we said. I just want to make a little announcement, just to say thank you very much to all of you for being here. And I don't know how to say thank you other than give you some. <laughs> Okay guys, lights off. I think you'll understand why in just a short moment. Are you about ready? Are we ready? Yeah. Blow the candles out.